Hey BioFans, it is Mr. Hajarian hanging out with Mr. Jones and getting ready to record video lecture number four uh, for the carbon cycle. So please have your skeleton notes out and let's get ready to go. All right, carbon. So here's our carbon. Why does it have four hands coming out of it? So why does it look like that basically? Because carbon can make four bonds. And in a moment I'll show you what it can bond with. Okay, so right here, what do you think these are right there? So this is our carbon. Could these be hydrogens? And if so, what would you call this whole thing? What would you call all of that? And if that's carbon, what could these be? Hmm, could they be oxygens, possibly? Okay, so let's start with where we can find carbon. Carbon uh, is, can be found in the atmosphere and it is found in the form of carbon dioxide CO2 okay it is released from all living organisms during respiration now this respiration right here it means breathing please don't mix this up with this kind of respiration with cellular respiration all right there are two different things and decomposition which is the idea of decomposing uh, it's also released from volcanic eruptions and from burning fossil fuels so I have a question for you what's one way that we burn fossil fuels every day. There's more than one, but see if you can name one. All right, moving on. Carbon is also found in the atmosphere in the form of methane, which is CH4. Remember, that's something that I was just showing you. There's carbon, and then you have lots of, and by lots of, I mean four hydrogens. Okay, that cow just got a hydrogen on it. Uh, and these are some different ways that you can actually, uh, different places where you can find methane and usually in flooded soils methane is a natural byproduct that ends up sort of bubbling to the surface so you end up getting that so if you ever see that that's actually methane that's CH4 that is coming out <clears throat> okay so continuing to talk about where we can find uh, carbon it is found in all living things biosphere uh, producers absorb CO2 so think about another name for producers what else can we call them autotrophs I won't write the whole thing down okay so they do photosynthesis and hopefully you remember the reaction for it in photosynthesis the idea is to make glucose which is a type of sugar and then we take that sugar we take that glucose and we talked about different molecules, so it's used for building the blocks for different biomolecules. So carbohydrates is one, lipids is another, proteins, and DNA. We won't really get into detail with these yet. This will be something we'll do in our next unit, but it's important to know what the four biomolecules are that we'll be talking about. Okay, biomolecules, molecules of life. Okay, here's a quick check for understanding, a little quick CFU. As a small seed grows into a tree, where does the stuff in the tree come from? What do you think? See if you can answer that real quick before moving on. So if you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it real quick. Okay, here's your hint. There it is. See if that helped you out. If you need to pause again, go ahead and write your response and then let's move on. So we'll continue to talk about the biosphere. So consumers and decomposers eat organisms that contain carbon molecules, okay? These molecules that have carbon in them are broken down for energy, so now we're talking about cellular respiration. So the idea of breaking these food molecules down and making energy instead, and for decomposition. And then using all of these to build, again, the building blocks of life, all right? Here's a little bonus for you. What do you think that is? See if you can name that. Okay. Let's move on. <clears throat> Soil contains waste and detritus or detritus. Do you remember this term from about a week ago? There's a term that's connected to it called detritivores. And then we have permafrost, which is basically soil that is permanently frozen, and that makes up about 20% of the Earth's land mass. And then under certain conditions, we have fossil fuels that form. And when we do any kind of combustion, when we burn them, 
that's when we release fossil fuels. So a question that I asked you earlier was, how you know, what's one way that we do this? And that has to do with cars burning fossil fuels. Okay, so this is a really important thing. Carbon is present in the ocean. So this picture right here, we got to pay very close attention to that picture. CO2 actually goes in and out of the ocean. So it dissolves in and out of the surface. Notice how this one's going in, this one's coming out. Uh, some CO2 is absorbed by plankton. Uh, and then the rest of it actually sinks to the bottom of the ocean. All right, and here's a really important reaction for you right there. So we got CO2 plus H2O, so we have CO2 and water. Um, and they make this thing right here. Oh, let me fix that. This pen's playing with me. Okay. They make this thing right there. That's called carbonic acid, H2CO3. And you get that when you get the combination of these two. Now I want to show you something um, that is really fascinating for me and I want to explain why. So we have these pictures. We have, look at it as like picture one, picture two, and picture three. Okay, sorry about this red dot that's appearing. I don't know what that's about. So the picture, picture one, the one on the left hand side, you'll notice it says 375 ppm. The ppm right there is parts per million. All right, the second picture is 450 to 500, and then the last one is over 500. Now, look what's going on with the temperature uh, in Celsius. So, what's going on here? Plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. That doesn't seem like it's a big deal when you go just one temperature above, but notice what's going on in each picture. And this one, everybody seems happy. All the fish are soon around. And all of a sudden, you go one degree up in Celsius, and notice what's going on. Where is everybody? And then finally, here, nothing looks the same anymore. It looks like the entire environment is changing because of it. So hopefully, this helps you understand the correlation between the amount of CO2 and what can actually happen with temperature and, what, and how that could impact the environment. Okay? Here's a picture for you to look at. I won't go into uh, detail with this, so if you need to pause the video, you can, but it's basically, it's walking you through, you know, where can we find carbon. So again, if you need to pause it, go ahead. All right, so we're getting close to the end. Um, the carbon cycle has a short-term and a long-term sort of version of it. So the short-term uh, is what we call the faster one. It's also called the biological cycle, and this takes hundreds to thousands of years, okay? So the idea is carbon goes from atmosphere to biosphere to oceans back to atmosphere, and that can actually take a long time, all right? There's a little note down here, organic matter trapped in permafrost is relatively isolated from the carbon cycle, so keep that in mind. Now let's move on. Here's the long-term one. This one is slower. It's also known as a geological cycle. So the idea is, as the term suggests, this takes lots, lots, lots longer. So it's millions of years as opposed to this last one where we said hundreds to thousands of years, okay? Going back to the geological cycle, this takes millions of years. So the idea is organic matter is buried and compressed into coal, oil, and fossil fuels. And as you probably know, this takes a long time uh, to take place. And then uh, sedimentary rock gradually undergoes uplifting and, and whatnot, and then this sort of comes, the compounds and the rocks and, and whatnot, they kind of go into the ocean. There's volcanic activity that brings the carbon to the surface. So there's a lot of this that takes place, but it takes millions of years. Here's a slow versus fast cycle joke. Hopefully you find this funny. I laughed. Okay, now here's the thing that I guess makes us kind of sad. And let's be real here. Humans play a negative role when it comes to the carbon cycle in a lot of ways. So our activity, human activity, affects the carbon cycle in lots of different ways. So what do we do? Let's start up here. We burn fossil fuels for transportation, as we talked about, for electricity, for heat, and for industry. Unfortunately, we cut down uh, forests. We burn and cut down trees. This is called deforestation. We do it for development, for grazing, for agriculture, which you know makes sense from an economical uh, or economic uh, point of view, but not so much for the health of our planet. And for livestock production, uh, this obviously increases the amount of methane. So here's the really important part. So this here, I'm going to star it because this is a really big deal. The net effect is that carbon is moving from the slow, the geological cycle, to the fast or biological cycle. 
so that higher concentrations of carbon dioxide, methane, and other greenhouse gases are in the atmosphere. That's a really big deal. And it's also important to know the carbon cycle does not, not have the capacity to balance this over a short term. So we're not doing ourselves any favor by doing this. Okay, I want to show you a couple different graphs. So notice this one starts at 1800, it goes all the way to 2000. And this is basically uh, the tons of carbon per year that are in the atmosphere. Okay, I want to show you this one. This is 1960 here, we're probably somewhere about here. Um, that's when I graduated from high school, but that's besides the point. So, notice what's going on right here. It's shooting up. What's shooting up? The carbon dioxide. So this is our x-axis or our independent variable. I'm going to write I and D for independent variable. This is our y-axis and our dependent variable. Okay, so this right here depends on this. That's why the year goes down here. So as you can see, as we're getting, um, I guess, higher up in the year, the amount of CO2 we have in the atmosphere is rising. Why do you think that is? Is it a normal thing? Is it something we're causing? And here's a question for you. What's up with this? Why is that going up and down the way that it is every year? This might be a hint for you. So that's your question. I won't answer it for you, but let's see if you can answer that yourself. You may actually have to do a little bit of research to find that out. All right, so here's our carbon that's happy. It's holding on to two oxygens that look like donuts right there. So the way that you would draw this is boom, 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 boom. But wait, Mr. H, I thought you said there are four bonds. There are four bonds. That's actually what it looks like. All right, so that is the end of our lecture. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in class.